Yep. My name is Dick Dolce, and I'm here on I Believe tonight. I'm from a church called Faith Chapel in Reynoldsburg. And since I was on the show called I Believe, I thought, like, um, I should talk about what believing means. So I looked it up in the dictionary. I thought that would be a good place to look. And it said, believe is to hold on to, to trust, to follow, to really, to really, um, to believe. It's not just, it's not just acknowledging the existence of God. But to believe in God is to have faith in God. So I thought, faith? Well, what does that mean? And so I looked in the Bible, where I thought would be a good place to look about faith. And uh, it said, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. And a couple words stood out to me, substance and evidence. And I thought, well, you know, I heard words like blind faith. You know, faith is blind, and, and the scriptures doesn't seem to teach that. It says that there's actual substance in faith and evidence. And I thought, well, that's good, because Jesus said, Trust in me, and trust also in God, for I have many mansions prepared for you in heaven. And he said, if there wasn't a place like that, I wouldn't tell you that. And as I was thinking about that, I thought, well, faith is pretty powerful, and believing is really, is really a powerful thing, because that's what gives us that peace that God gives us, like uh, the Lord told us not to, to be worried, to worry about things and to be like uh, a little kid, like children who, they don't worry about the rent or the gas bill or, or anything, they're, they don't even worry about what's on, you know, what's, if they're going to eat or not, they know that their, their father or mother is going to, you know, going to prepare things for them. And that's the way we should be with God. We should have faith that the Lord's going to take care of us. So. If we say to ourselves, well, I believe in God, we shouldn't just say, well, I believe in God because uh, we acknowledge that there is a God. I mean, we should be aware of what we say when we say we believe. So why don't we, um, why don't we stop for a second and just pray and, and ask the Lord to, to help us believe. God, I just pray that you give, our, give us our heart to believe, to put our trust in you, Father. And I just want to thank you, Lord, for giving me a chance to, to be here and, and to talk to these people about believing. And I just pray that you bless, bless everyone who's watching. Thank you. Well, yippee i o kai a We're going to do a little cowboy song tonight, and I believe. I mean, hey, we got to be different. So I got my friend here, Mike Clark, not to be confused with Roy Clark, doing a little cowboy song for you. Caught your eye, okay.
Jesus broke the wild horse in my heart. He sat down, he broke bread, he gave me new wine. He kindled a fire in my soul and dug me a well where living waters flow. Showed me the way to the green grass above on the hills of his wide open plains. And he said it was mine if I just follow him. So I'm here now to stay. I live day by day to walk in. His wonderful way Jesus broke the wild horse in my heart Dick Dolce again from Faith Chapel in Reynoldsburg, and a little story I'd like to tell you tonight about a friend of mine, Jesus Christ. All right. Well, you see, one day, Jesus was walking along the road with his disciples, and he's feeling pretty tired and real hungry, and uh, happened to cross upon a well. Well, he was feeling pretty bad and awful slow, and he said, hey, you guys, why don't you go to the town and give me something to eat? So. They cruised on out, and he just hung there by the well. Well, then he was there for a little while, and a woman started bopping along, and she looked like she was singing a song. She was feeling pretty good, just going up to get some water. Well, the Lord said to her before she had a chance to speak, he said, woman, how about a drink? And she said, what? Are you talking to me? Well, you see, Jews and Samaritans didn't get along too good. I mean, they, they didn't like each other too much. The Jews hated them, and Samaritans, well, they hated the Jews. Well, Jesus said, look, woman, if you knew who you were talking to, you'd be asking me for some water. And she said, really? He said, yeah, I can give you water. If you drink it, you'll never be thirsty again. And she looked pretty surprised. She said, hey, I'm sick of walking up to this well, and I'd love to have some water. You know, I'd love not to have to drink anymore. And, so she said, uh, I'll have some. And he said, well, the water I got is living water. And when it gets in your heart, you'll, you'll never be thirsty again. Well, you probably wonder what Jesus meant about that story or what that story was about. I'll tell you. You see, living water represents the Holy Spirit of God. And when that comes in your life, you're not thirsty anymore. Thirsty for things like drugs, and alcohol, religion, sex, you know, those things they... They satisfy your appetite for a while, but then they, they wear off. But the Holy Spirit, boy, when that comes in, it stays, and you're not thirsty anymore. So have a drink of living water. It's on the Lord, and it's free. Try it. All right. Well, I'm signing off now, and I hope you enjoyed the story. Good night. Some programs throughout the day on 